Hey there, this is Christine. Thanks for tuning into my Mostly Keto Kitchen. What I want to talk about today is a lot of biochemistry. So my board is really busy. I hope I can do a decent job of trying to explain what my, my message is here. Uh, but what I really wanted to build on here was what I talked about yesterday, and that is what happens when you eat sugar. So sugar is sucrose, and sucrose is made of a glucose part, which is here in orange, and a fructose part, which is here in red. And when you eat that sugar and it comes into your body, goes through your stomach and into your small intestine, they, those two parts get split. So there's an enzyme that goes through and cuts this in half. And then those two parts have different fates. So the glucose, that guy is going to head off over into the bloodstream and then you're gonna have glucose. So this is what we call the blood glucose. And so you're gonna have glucose floating through your bloodstream, it's gonna go throughout your body, and those cells that need some energy are gonna open up and let it in. Now they open up if there's insulin, that's, and if the cells are sensitive to the insulin, then they'll open up and they'll let the glucose in. But I put a little X here, and the X is to indicate that that might not happen if you become insensitive to the insulin. So it's blocked, and so the glucose stays in the bloodstream. Now that can also happen if you've just eaten too much. So let's say that you've just had a big dinner and this is now dessert and the, your body's saying, I don't really need that extra glucose in me. And so then it's not gonna open up and the glucose is gonna stay in the blood. This can also happen if you haven't had enough exercise. Those muscles need to be out there working and they need to be hungry for the glucose to let it in. So what'll now happen is that the glucose just accumulates in the blood and that's what's bad. So that is basically the definition of diabetes as you've got high blood glucose levels. What'll end up happening to the glucose is that it should go to the liver and then the liver should deal with it. So under normal circumstances, if you're not diabetic, it'll go to the liver or the glucose could go to a fat cell. Fat cells always wanna bring in more and more and more. So they'll bring the glucose in and then they convert the glucose into fat. And then, but that's not so good either, because that's the, hey, I ate too much dinner, then I had some dessert on top of it, I'm way too full, I didn't exercise today, where's this glucose gonna go? Mm, straight to fat stores. So that's basically the fate then for the glucose side of this story. Now, the fructose side is different. The fructose isn't going into, um, all, you know, going all throughout the body and your cells are not gonna pull it up. The fructose goes to the liver. And I'm kind of happy with this color. Isn't this kind of, it's like a gross brown color, sort of liver, livery color. So the fructose is gonna to go to the liver. And the first thing that the fructose would be used for, if it can be, is to create glycogen. Now glycogen is how we store glucose. So each of these little branches, that's just like lots and lots of little glucose is all linked together. The fructose gets converted to a glucose and then the glucose goes into the glycogen. Now, what if you're in that state though where you have eaten too much today and you haven't exercised, you never depleted your glycogen stores, now you've got this excess fructose. I mean, there's only so much glycogen that can be in the liver. So that's not what happens to the fructose. The fructose then instead ends up getting turned into a triacylglycerol. So this is a fat. I don't know if you remember we had talked before about adipocytes or fat cells. Fat cells are filled with triacylglycerides. And uh, so this is, uh, uh, these are fatty acid chains, these little E parts on here. So that's what happens, the fructose becomes fat. And then the fats leave the liver and they go into the bloodstream. And then that's what leads to high LDL numbers. So LDLs are basically cholesterol particles that are looking for a home for the triglycerides. And so those are floating all throughout the body. And sure enough, if you have a muscle cell, it's like, oh yeah, I could use some energy, it'll pull it in. But if you're full and you haven't exercised enough, then you're gonna end up with too many of these things in your body. And so that's how it ends up that people that have metabolic syndrome, they often have too high glucose in their blood and they also have too high LDL uh, floating around in their blood. So that's no good. And similarly, triglycerides. So that's part of the, the LDL particle. All right, so that kind of gives you an idea of the two different directions. And what you can see then is that the fructose can be pretty detrimental because what'll happen is if you end up with too many of these fats just floating through the bloodstream, they're gonna circle back around over to the liver and then they can just basically get deposited around the liver and that's what leads to fatty liver. And not just fatty liver, but you're gonna get fat deposits all through the inside of you and that's just really what the visceral fat is. 
nobody really wants the fat. Like none of the cells throughout the body are saying like, oh yeah, I could use it, I got tired today. No, they are saying, I don't want it, store it for a, a day when you might not have enough food, which just really never really seems to happen to us very often, does it? Now, one last thing I want to talk about is down here, and it's kind of goofy. I ended up putting a brain down at the bottom here. I know it would have been nice if I could have put the brain up top, but the brain is at the bottom. Interesting difference between glucose and fructose is that the fructose stimulates the brain's reward center. And that's what other addictive substances do. So you, um, the reason why we could say it's addictive is because you feel withdrawal if you stop eating sugar, you feel cravings for sugar, you can become sensitized to it, meaning that you know a little more, a little more, a little more in order to really taste the sweetness in something. And similarly, if you get yourself off sugar, then you will notice that even the slightly sweetest thing is like, whoa, it's crazy sweet. So that's affecting this uh, reward center of our brain. Now, glucose also sends signals into our brain, but those signals have more have to do with, hey, tell the pancreas to release some insulin or satiety would be another part of what glucose does. But you've got to remember here, fructose is kind of like this extra special thing. The glucose is this key part. I mean, it's like the most important of all the macronutrients. Uh, it's so important that our bodies make it. And so uh, we have to have glucose, but fructose is just sort of this like extra yummy bit. And uh, um, that's, but that's why we eat too much of it is because it is, it's almost too yummy. And uh, anyway, so I hope that this makes some sense. I would love to hear if you've got questions or comments about this. So you can always write something down below the video, or uh, you can tweet me at Christine at La Plata Health Coach. And um, I would um, love to hear what you guys think about this. So thanks so much for listening.